nice to be home. It was nice being there. It was nice to be home. I think Kaki was fully impressed with us. Was it? Because she said, remember she asked how long have we been meeting? Yeah. And I was just like, oh my God, that's awesome. So, Rick, who can you see? Uh, I can see half of you. All right, see all the mom? Yeah, I got a third of it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. One of them have a coffee or something. All right, I'm going to leave you with her. I need to get a cup of coffee. I haven't had a cup of coffee yet, so I'm going to look. I'll see you first. <laughs> Here's some. Yep. Don't hey, Mom. Hi. How are y'all? Fine. How about you? <sighs> How about you? It's a rough morning. <laughs> You've been sick the last couple days? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm kind of sick. I've got a problem with kidneys. With kidneys? Yeah. This, this from the doctor or from you? Uh, <laughs> Is this from the doctor or you? <laughs> Excuse me. You don't know? I don't know either. Uh, I've had it for about three months, and uh, it was getting better, but it's gotten really worse, man. Hmm. The vet's is going to take me over to urgent care. Okay. I had an appointment for Wednesday, but I can't wait to Wednesday. It hurts too bad. Yeah. Steve kept work over here. Trying everything to find out where her snacks are. She tried every pocket bet she's got. You spoil you spoil that dog? <laughs> no, there's her nose is in the air. She yeah. her train. Her owner's trained. Yeah. Right, right. Well her owner's not giving in at this moment. She's put the T R A T S in the way. Oh, you're down to spell it. That's, That's nice. nice. <laughs> 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 uh, Who's trying now? <laughs> she knows words. She knows words. Don't your dogs know words? I no. saw a video of a dog recently that knew like 900 words. Yeah, dogs are smart. Yeah, but no words anymore. They can't hear. Oh, well, there you go. So Rick, are you feeling better? Yes. Yeah, I out Friday, he said I didn't have to be in my sling all the time, but it just it still aches a lot. And I've got to get on my exercises a little more strenuously. I've been doing them, but it's like I need to have a better regimen of it. But yeah, I hate those therapy exercises. Yeah, and I have to, I have to be self motivated because I'm doing them at home. Yeah, they work though if you do them. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pain goes away quicker. There's an incentive. <laughs> yes, but it's funny how you do your morning or so exercises, and all of a sudden in the afternoon you're out doing something, and you're like, oh, crap, I forgot to do my exercises. Right. right. Well, maybe you should build that into your schedule, like make that the priority work. Oh, yeah. I hear a planner, I hear a planner background, you know, a management kind of person. I hear something coming out, eking out. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> like management. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you. How is Cindy this week? She's, she's doing okay. Her back's been out. But you, you mentioned your kidneys. She's been through... A couple research drugs yeah. for kidneys, and so she, nothing's worked so far. So. Hmm. My back just breaks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the kidney problems are pretty typical in women, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Older women. I, in fact, when I talked, I sent Nellie. I forgot to since Laura passed away and everything. I got Sinelli 
of flowers for Christmas, so I sent them for New Year's, and Marie called me the other day, and while she was over there with Nellie, and Nellie said she had a I owe you, I owe you something, I don't know what it was. Some yeah. kind of thing, I owe you or something, I don't know what it was. So. But uh, Peggy was telling me when she was there that she couldn't talk to Nellie because she was too interested in men. She said there was a bunch of men over there somewhere wherever they were visiting and Nellie said they were her men. And so it's her, you could not even get her attention. Oh, you're talking about her or Nellie? Nellie. <laughs> oh, Nellie. <laughs> well, you you got to have an entertainment when you're older. <laughs> you got to pick and show, pick and choose with her, the cool of the moments. <laughs> Family or men? <laughs> Family for me. So is Alex recovered? She, uh, yeah, she's better. She's been at work. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So she had a group of friends over, and they all went down to the barn, and Alex showed them where the uh, peacocks sleep. Because uh, it's, it's just fascinating to, little things like that sometimes are fascinating for people, I guess. They look up in the tree in the moonlight or whatever, and you see a bunch of peacocks. Uh, really really right. Well, you know, I didn't know that. My, my friend, friend Ruth, Ruth was over in uh, Clearwater Beach. Yeah. And yeah. her neighborhood was loaded with peacocks, peacocks, and I did, I did not know, know that the peacocks were in the tree until one fell, fell out one afternoon when we were walking through the neighborhood and it fell out of the tree. I guess it was late, like early dusk, and they were wearing roosted. Yeah. Fell asleep and fell out of the tree and I go, oh my God, what in the world? She said, well, look up. And I looked up and all these birds are up in the tree. I've never seen that. I was telling somebody that you get a peacock root and they said, are they real good? Yes. <laughs> and I said, well, I've never heard that. I don't know if I've ever heard it. That'll be one of the challenges for her if you run over me. How many do you have? You can't. You know, there's a law that you can't in Florida that you can't kill a peacock because there was a guy going around shooting them with a, a, a little BB gun. Yeah. And Ruthie's the president of her homeowners association, and she called the police out there. And he, you know, of course, he said, "I need to see that he's doing that." Really? <laughs> but, you know, they, they, can't, they can't shoot the peacocks. Right. Uh, the, um... Well, you can be prosecuted for shooting the peacocks. Right, right, right. right. You can okay. certainly shoot them. Yes, you can shoot them, but yeah, you can be arrested and prosecuted. I guess it's probably cruel to the animals, I guess. But I guess you can't kill a bat either because Ruth had bats in her, in her roof. And they had to have special mitigation to get them out of there, put something up so that they could get out, but they couldn't get back in. So over time, they all vacated her under the roof. Um, because of the mosquitoes down there. Could be, who knows? But anyway, they're 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 not allowed to. Yeah, I think they're not allowed to to kill. Rick's got a bat cave. He doesn't need. It. Right, I got a whole bat cave behind my house. Oh, you. <laughs> Have a tourist site. You know, people go to Austin just to see the bats come out during the night on, from under the bridge. No, baby. I don't, you know, I've never been to that. I've heard of it. I had to ask a local or. I've never been to it either, but I'm sure they named it because that. It really does exist. Yeah. We went to it. Well, I've been to Bat Cave, but I haven't gone to watch the bats come out. No, no, no. This is actual, the actual cave. Oh, wow. Austin, yeah. We did go see the bats come out from under the bridge at dusk in Austin. Down there. Yeah, the, it, Bat Cave, the community behind me, actually has a cave across the river okay. that a local told me about. And I always wondered why it was called Bat Cave. Mm. That was the place, and I thought that was kind of interesting. It's a tourist site. Not here, Dave. Oh, it isn't? I think so. Oh. No. 
It's private land, and you got to have a local pretty much tell you where it's at. So, but they named it Bat Cave, so I guess it's just the name of the town and the cave. And look, and I, you might be very well right. I just, I've always asked about where's the Bat Cave. Huh? The locals told me, you know, where it was, so to speak. And I was like, oh my gosh, I never knew it was there. And it's not something you just get to go to. Huh. Let's see. So they got it fenced off? I don't know about fenced off. I can't say for sure. I've never physically been there, but they said, I think it was like private property some, somewhere where you went through, had to go across this river and get to it. Well, the Twin Falls is private property too, you yeah. know. Well, that's a good point. Sure was. I remember going to that years ago. So here you go. A um, bit of information. Yeah. Back unincorporated community in Henderson, Henderson County, North Carolina, and is part of the Metropolitan Statistical Area. And it says, according to the Nature Conservancy, that cave is the, the largest, largest known granite fissure cave, cave in North, North America. America. It is it's not open, open to the public, public. And, and tours are not offered due to its protected status of the Conservancy, as, as well as concerns over white nose syndrome, syndrome, a disease, a disease that, that can be deadly to bats. Right, and I think it is, when I say private, I think it's part of the clocks. And but it's protected by the, the yeah. state. Which the clocks, and I say that guys, the clocks were from years back, uh, Congressman Clark and uh, his descendants. So they are the uh, start of the conservancy, really. They buy up land, so to speak. Sure. But in the conservancy, so they're a big, big factor in that. And this mountain, where it be at, I believe, is still part of their land back in there. Well, the only thing, the only thing that probably keeps most people from going is probably their age. I mean, you went to, uh, you went to Twin Falls. Both of you been to Twin Falls. Both of you have probably been to quarries. You're not supposed to go to a quarry. Right, right, right. That's very true. You're right, Tommy. It is due to age. It was like we, we wouldn't do it today, but we did it when we were, you know, younger. Yeah. Well, it says the bats are it, the, the reason they're closed is, is to protect the bat bats. Sure. Because the lower half of the cave may be a, right now. They they don't. The entire cave is closed to protect the colony of bats as they raise their young. So, they protect because um, if they get diseased. And they could die off. And like Rick said, bats eat a lot of things that we like them to eat. Yeah, they're eating a lot of insects that will help one of the pine trees or anything that's going to, uh, you know, mosquitoes and stuff. But also, the bats can transmit diseases easily. That would be the other animals. Yeah, yeah, they can. The other animals are the droppings, right? Yeah. I had an article last night, some of the news article I was watching. That, oh, it was uh, Fauci. Fauci was talking about how they do research. Mm -hmm. that when they had their um, crew go over to observe what was going on with a certain um, viral, not the COVID, but the viral, some of the virus, they observed from you know, the droppings of the bat to who ate the bat. Dung and how has that been transferred to food on the table, you know, through wet, wet, what they call it, wet markets? So. Right. Well, do you guys remember feeding the ducks years ago with the big white colony house? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I'm not mistaken, years later, I was working for, uh, I can't remember that his name. He had a, he had a guardrail business, Mom. It was off of 581, uh, uh, the guy's name. But he had a guardrail business, but he was a general contractor, so to speak. And I worked for him, and we went to that house and changed the shingles on the roof to metal roof. In order to do that, we had to get into the roof, so to speak. And we had to, I did it just by, by hand. This is how we do it. I scooped out five gallon buckets of bat poo out of the attic. And now we know what's wrong with you. 
Yeah. I hope that mask on. No, back then there was no such thing as masks and gloves. Oh my God. If they did, nobody told us. Oh my God. That was our job. We just scooped it out, put it in five gallon buckets, and, you know, tossed it somewhere. Was that Pal? Pal, that's right. Pal. Okay. Yep. Wow. Hey, what was the guy's name that uh, had the. Uh, Apartment complexes, Rick, that you worked for for a while. That would no, be him. him. That was him. Yeah, because yep. I, I did. did. Where Mom worked, where, where, where I think Betsy slammed her thumb in the door. door. Uh, across, across the street was a. a Betsy party. slammed Mom's thumb in the door. No, no Betsy, Betsy slammed her own thumb. Oh. Yeah. yeah. What was the name of that restaurant? She was taking me there for a banana split. Boy, I sure needed one after that. Uh, that could have been good. Yeah, that should have been good enough for a, a whole year. <laughs> Would you know that Brenda did the same thing at Smith's restaurant on Williams Road when she was 18? I took her to eat. I told her, I told her, I said, you watch what you do because they wanted her to move out the house as they And that's when she went home and fed the dog in the dish. She showed me, I don't know if it was a thumb or a hand or what, but she messed up. Because I told her she was 18. You know what's weird about that? It's funny how, and it could be my lifestyle, but there's a lot of stuff I do not remember about us when we were younger. I mean, a lot. And, but that's one thing that's always stuck out with me. And the day that Brenda left the house was the day that I ended up with Dad beating on him. He was mad about something. And he was. The old in the dish, uh, the one in the dish. The he was on her with his fist and uh, tried to interrupt him and stop him. Yeah, he, that one was really bad. Yeah, and that's when she left. I was, I was out of uh, low-end equipment uh, and uh, she came out there and they uh, kept it all around there. Yeah, she drove it low back there. She kept it and she was here and she was making payments on it. And she was here and she was going to let it happen. They did not know about that. Uh, that was a bad deal. Mm-hmm. Well, you were up in the cloud, Betsy. Yes, I was. Wasn't I? <laughs> Betsy, you don't know how many times as a kid I used to, well, maybe you do, as I would hitchhike up that mountain and walk up in there for however long, but I would hitchhike all the way up there to see you guys or your friends. We tried to, we actually tried to get Dad to let you come live with us. But, did you? Oh, we did, absolutely. But you were underage, and he perceived that Joe and I were hippies. Well, gosh, I don't know how I got that idea. <laughs> <laughs> even, though, even though I think, you know, despite maybe what his perceptions were, we were work, we worked all the time, and yep. would have, Joe would have put you to work, and we would have made sure you got to school. Well, and, no, 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 wait a minute now. I can remember it didn't Joe. Happen. To, it didn't happen. Uh, well, the... the I always thought one of the coolest things Joe did, and it, you know, I would, I don't think I could do it, but he worked, he made $150 a week. He made more than that, but, yeah. you know, he, whatever he, the figure was, but he, he, you know, he said, I work until I make what I need, and that was it. Right, right. but if he needed more, then he would work more. That was always the deal. He only right. worked. It, yeah, he was, you know, and I worked more than what we needed because remember I worked a full time job. I was working. You were, doing, you were working with Reed or who was a. He, he and Reed had a little business going, but they, for a while there, they subcontracted to Lowe's. So they were doing all the roofing for Lowe's. And, yeah. then, and then Joe went on and started doing working for uh, Daryl Brandstetter. The guy, um, there was another guy, I can't remember his name, that they did all the work for, but they did all of his 
roofing and remodeling. He had remodeling jobs. We did some churches. We did some houses. So there was a lot of stuff that Daryl had us doing. Um, mountain because he had a lot of, a lot of extra work going on. And so right. we, and we rented that house from him there, or rented it. No, the, which was a cool house, had a shed out, and that's where you had your garden. Yeah. And it was Hale. Hale Hale, or who was that next door? It was Hale Hale and his wife. Yeah, that uh, they made, what do you call it? The, the, when they strap a pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that heat that's left over. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, 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 my first uh, calf's liver was when they had butchered a cow, cow, a calf. Yeah. Brought over this big old slab of liver. And I thought, oh my God, it was that big. Didn't know. And this tail told me how to make it. Oh my God, it was the best, best uh, liver that I ever had. And from that day, I had a good liver than onions. Now, who was the big tall guy that lived next door? No, that you're thinking about the log house. I think it was either Tom or John, the big guy that's also had his own little construction. Yes, we moved from the yellow house, yellow frame house that Daryl had, and to the log house. Okay. Had three. They had three kind of log dwellings on it. Martha Anderson lived in the small one. The Lois, we lived in the main house, and Tom. I think his name was Tom. Lived in the the other house because he had built that, and he also built the sink to accommodate his height. Right, that's what I remember. Yeah, yeah so lived in that house for a little while as well. That's where you had an actual wood stove. Right. Well, I had a wood stove in the yellow house because that was our heat yellow cook stove and the fireplace. And when we moved to the log house, we moved the wood cook stove to the log house. Oh, okay. It was our only form of uh, making food and heating the. Right. I didn't, I didn't realize that. But that was, that was pretty rough in it there. That was, all I can remember is it was a four wheel drive kind of place. Yep. And I remember that was the first time I had moonshine. <laughs> yep. uh, <laughs> so, was, of course, you were in age when you did this. Sure, I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that was, that was a rough. That was roughing it there. It was. It was roughing it. We were young, but it was roughing it. And it was from there that we moved. Um, from there, we moved to Colorado when uh, Monk Les Monk called us out to work in Colorado. So that's when we gave that up and moved out. Oh, you, out I didn't realize you knew somebody out there. Well, he actually lived on the way up the mountain. You know, there was a little curve in the mountain. There was a house sitting off to the left. And he, you know, if you're going up the mountain, and he and his wife had uh, were living there. I don't know how they got there, but they were living there because he was an Australian, and she wasn't from the area. I but, remember where the house was. Yeah. So yeah. we met them, and you know, started you know exchanging and meeting with them, and just you know socializing. And then they decided he he had managed pro uh, hotel properties in St. Thomas. So he was on a, they were on a little sabbatical from doing that. And then they decided, okay, we're now going to go across country and see if we can get another job managing pro, um, uh, resort property. So they ended up wheeling and dealing with us. They gave us the yellow Super Beetle that we had, and we gave them our Volkswagen bus, the camper, the camper. So that's when we traded, you know, the camper away. Um, and as we were still living in the, the log house with the little Volkswagen bug, and it made it up that road pretty good. And in fact, Joe's mother came to see us one summer, and Joe said, "Now call me when you, you know, call me at the store at Walter's store to let me know that you're heading this way, and I'll meet you down at the end of the driveway and drive your car up the driveway." And she had a big old Buick Wildcat. Do you remember how big those boats were? Sure, low too. She never called us. She never called us, and uh, and lo and behold, here she comes up the driveway. She drove all the way up that driveway. Oh, you like, oh, oh this is all got an <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I like the store. That store was so cool. What? Yeah. what store was that? Grandma, let me uh, work for her in the kitchen, so I helped her. I helped them in the restaurant and helped them cook for a little while. The one that was <laughs> jobs and, you know, other than uh, jobs. Where was the store? 
It was right there on 221. It hits up the bell and it levels off. Yeah. We think that you would turn to go down to our place. Right. So just beyond that, the Walter store, the general store was on the right. Produce stand for the summertime and had a, you know, a store and a little restaurant that his mom cooked and cooked food for. I wonder if it's still there. I think it's not operational. She made the best hot dog to, you know, the, the hot dog stand in downtown. Mm -hmm. the weekend, she made the best hot dog chili. Yeah, that was that was an interesting time. And uh, Bonnie, did Bonnie and him move up there at one time? Buckner and her husband, Paul. Or was it Paul? What was his name? Because he had a brother. Paul. I think it was Paul, yeah, because he got out of the Navy and then they moved up there. Yeah. I don't know whatever happened to them. So then you got uh, uh, Tommy, I don't remember too much about around Kathy, the first Kathy. I do remember you have a Yamaha 175. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. But you were mostly, you, uh, you had moved out, gone a lot. Uh, working for the same were you, when you moved out, did you work at the airport? Or was that when you were looking at working at home and Prentice gave you that jacket and stuff? You know, I don't know what happened to that jacket. I've been, I've wondered that many times. Um, but uh, we moved out to Salem and we're living out in Salem. And uh, I, uh, when we got, when we split up, I ended up in, uh, southeast, and then back to the south, then to the southwest. Really? Yeah. Down near. Uh, well, same. No, no. I, I, I lived. I had a had a room off of. Uh, is it Windsor? Um, what's the, what's the road that goes from uh, Towers out towards Salem? Uh, 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 what is that? 460? What is that? No, that's uh, uh, Brandon Avenue. You might be right, Tommy. Might be. Not what did, well, it'd be Colonial. Be Colonial. Right, was our thing. Anyway, it went towards Salem. And, you know, there's, in fact, there, there's a, there's, it's across, the, it was across, the, kind of across the street from Patrick Henry. And, you know, there's a really distinctive house that's like four or five stories yeah. uh, with its basement and stuff on the supposed on the street level. Um, I was back this way. In fact, I was not too far from uh, uh, Dancy Patterson. She lived over that way somewhere. But anyway, I rented a room there for a while and then ended up out in, in Pebble Creek and right. pretty much stayed out that way. I remember um, you being in Pebble Creek. I didn't remember you were in a room. It was, it was there for a few months. It was uh, uh, some lady rented me the room upstairs. You know, it's just they had converted an attic to a, to a bedroom and stayed there for a while. Did you guys know that I rented a room in the downtown building above a Lebanese restaurant? No. Oh, cool. Right the main uh, thoroughfare of Rono in downtown Roanoke. I can't remember what the name. I, I think it's somewhere near, you know, where the marketplace is, where we would go. Is it Early Girl or whatever? Whatever the, they was it in the downtown area right there inside the Vida? Oh, it was down. Yeah, I was on. I was in downtown. So you didn't have a problem finding a place to eat? I did. Well, that restaurant I actually would do work for, but it was five bucks a week to rent a room. How much? Twenty-five. I'm at Memorial Hospital with those apartments on the right hand side too. Remember that Franklin Road, or I can't remember what that road was. Is that uh, right? Yeah, that's right. I, I had a uh, actually that was an apartment, but I uh, <clears throat> there's a bridge that crosses over. Yeah. In a, in that two story or three story big brick apartment. I when I moved out, I left <clears throat> I left mom. 
was that, 16 years old, I moved out and went to, uh, I don't know how I met this guy, but I moved into his apartment, went to work at Singer Furniture, and every day when I was 16, and I just lied about, I guess I lied about my age when I got there. <laughs> they check, did they? You know, I went to work at Sabre Stop at 17, and they never checked. I was working in Pennsylvania at 15, and they did Yeah, but that was more normal than when we were No, no it wasn't. You, you couldn't work until you were 18 then. Well, we couldn't work until we were 18. Yeah. Either back then, they would question how old you were. Yeah, I was, uh, I worked in this town, so I think it was named Murphy's in Washington, Pennsylvania. And, and my I birthday came around, around and, and it was my 16th birthday, birthday that I saw my 19th birthday. birthday. What, what did Cole say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Ralph. Yeah, Ralph. Yeah, Ralph. It's all relative, Rick. Right, uh, I was going to say. Cole, you are, I think. You know? <laughs> yeah. That Rick is like a little chia pet. She sprouted hair while we were in the snow. <laughs> did she? Did she really? She, it just seems that way. Yeah, right. Well, actually, animals will do that in the cold. All right, you sh I mean, I was surprised at the horses on how thick they get. Really? Oh, yeah. Now, you don't have any horses left there, do you? No, we do not. But, yeah, every winter. And even our dogs will get a thicker coat and then shed in the, in the winter. I, I'll pepper deal when she went to D.C. and it was... Old and snow when she came back. I told Betsy she had more hair. <laughs> she did. She she had really thin, wispy hair. And when yeah. she came back from DC after the cold snow last February, that dog had sprouted hair. Isn't that funny how that works? It's yeah. Yep. Hmm. So, so the uh, how is Betty doing? Betty uh, has COVID. But she's doing oh. fine. Oh no, that's she's, hard. She's still lucid. As far as I know, nobody's allowed in. Oh, so nobody knows if she's lucid or not. Yeah. Everybody. Uh, well, we assume from what they tell us, she's fine. Uh, Can you talk? But, with her? No, she doesn't do well. With that. <laughs> she's she she no talking on the phone is not like a thing for her. Okay. Okay. It's, um, she, it, it's funny, Cindy goes, I think she's got bleach in her blood veins because it just probably eats anything that gets through her. <laughs> they need to, they need to. Uh, is, is this an expression or is she serious? No, she's, she, it's an expression because all, we were talking about this last night. We all went out last night and had Japanese and we were sitting there talking about how she, has been through life with horse stomping and breaking her hips and knees and legs and fingers and the stuff that's happened to her, the, the colds, the diseases that's been around. And and she, right. she, she never is faced by it. It's like walking three weeks later. Yeah, it's like one day, they had to go to the doctor with Mel and Tucker, and they told her they couldn't put a splint on it because her finger was crooked the way it broke, and she had left it for so long. So she, she turned her back to Melody, straightened her finger, and turned back around and said, Okay, put it on. Oh my God. <laughs> That's hard to hold. She's a hard she's a tough old one. Maybe she's wired differently for pain. Yeah. yeah. Handle it to her. She's got arthritis all over her body, broken bones. And keeps on going. Yes. Yeah, so when they, uh, at one point, there's like talking about doing knee surgery, and uh, she had nothing between her, whatever the cushion is for your knee. She had nothing, and she's been walking on it for years. Okay. Meniscus. Meniscus, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. She's doing great. <laughs> well, she's still okay being in the facility, you reckon? Uh, yeah, she's she to that point where it's like, Grandma, she'll never be in there. Oh, 
the the tool player, uh, when they is like you'll be fine talking to you, and then she says, like, well, you know, I was at the bar and was doing stuff, or I had such and such, you know, all of a sudden. He's not always. So, now do you guys feed the peacocks? Mel took like over feeding the peacocks, uh, and still doing that. Yes. So, besides the peacocks, do you have to feed anything else? No, that was it. And how? I, you know, I know I asked earlier, and you said, but I didn't hear what you responded. No, I don't know if I did say it. Uh, I want to say. Oh. You went silent on that, Rick. I didn't hear the answer. Yeah. Yeah. It's 10 or 15. Oh. Wow. Can you sell them? You know, we've seen them for sale for anywhere from 100 to $500. A... We can sell them? <laughs> $500 a couple. How, how easy are they to catch and cage to, to do that? Well... <laughs> That's going to be the dilemma is how to catch them. Now, we've thought about Ages. net and netting, oh, yeah. corner and netting, but we haven't pursued it and don't pretend, don't intend to pursue it until we absolutely have to, or just shoot them, I guess. Uh, well, you can't, you can't make any money if they're dead, can you? Well, it'd be kind of hard to make any money anyway if you damage them trying to catch them <laughs> well. but it, it's interesting I never the 30 years 31 years I've lived here this is the place that I always knew the peacocks were over the recent few years I've learned that people have peacocks around here and I often wonder if they migrated because they, there used to be from your place it used to be 50 of them or more. And uh, I'm thinking they migrated to different places. We have them here. I mean, you know, I don't know if that they started out as pets or what it is, but you hear stories about people saying, man, there's a peacock in my yard last night. Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. And you know, like you said, the, all you do is feed them, and they, they're they on their own. Huh? So, what do you feed them? Corn. Uh -oh. Corn That's what Ruthie feeds them, but you know, they actually do fine on their own. Uh, oh, yeah. You want one, Mom? She want one with the I know. I said, I was asking Mom, does she want one? No. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes <laughs> Ruthie really has one that would sit, sit on her front porch at her other house. house. And, you know, they're, they're kind of messy. messy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot messy. Yeah. On our house, we have one that stays down there and he poops all over the porch. Then he has girlfriends over and they poop all over the porch. And then some more girlfriends and they poop all over the porch. That's messy. It's constantly cleaning. And chimney, because if they sit on it with their sharp claws, they dig in. They're by walking across it. Uh, so yeah, they can be destructive for sure. They will actually, uh, if you have potted plants out on your porch, they will come up, they, we've had them out there, and they come up and they snip them, you know, and break off the blues and do stuff, or dig into the pots, looking for bugs. So you guys pretty much on hold for a while until Betty's situation changes, or? That is correct. We, we're trying to get it geared up to make our next move. Uh, what we need to do next in preparation of this. We're trying, Cindy and I are trying to plan uh, what we, we we need to do for the transition. Because uh, I'm afraid about when, when it happens, things are going to happen fast, and I hope we're ready for it. Well, you've got the house, right? Ann's house? Yes. But in the fourth day, uh, it was more than I anticipated, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. I know how to do this stuff. I'll do what I can. And then after that, when I was on it, uh, COVID hit. And that's 
period of the sky ride. Right. Okay, okay, well, let's just stop and we'll wait for this to bypass. Mm -hmm. And because I forgot how much a two by four, one or two is like six or seven dollars for a two by four. All right. From, yeah. from three? From two or three dollars, yeah. <coughs> so I was like, I just dust his name and do it no more, you know, until we can figure out what to do because I don't want to put that much money into it. You know? So the, I, I, I know for a while they come back down. Are they? It's down, but now look where I'm at, you know. Sure. I mean, granted, I, it, I'm a procrastinator at, at heart. So, it, you know, I probably drug my feet a little bit too long, but hey, it is what it is. I have. Got to it on your shoulder. Uh, yeah, I have something that I've got down there financially that. I'm going to get back onto with my shoulder gets well. You know, always hire somebody, if you, you know, if you, if, if you want. You don't, I mean, I know that's not the ideal. Well, that's money. Sure. That's material plus money. Right. Anyway, that's material plus money plus a permit. Oh. Uh, you got to have a permit. Oh, uh, there. Okay. But, see, there's a time factor, too. So... To get time, a can, it's my loss, absolutely. It's my loss, but you know, it's no different than if I had a mortgage payment on this house. I'm willing to, to deal with that. I'm okay. I know that the extent of this house is way more than what I can afford to pay some. So that's why I'm doing it. Now, I have gotten a lot closer at uh, being on the other side of this edge. Mm -hmm. And coming up, as soon as I get my shoulder well, I'll, uh, get the walls put back up and start sheetrocking, it'll be the electrical and the plumbing. Yeah. It'll be my deal. And then after that, once I complete the sheetrock, I'm, it's going to go fast. So the electrical and the plumbing comes before the sheetrock, right? Yeah. Yes, yes and no. Uh, uh so, so, on the, on the outside, outside wall, yes. yes. On the, on the inside, inside wall, no. So, so I, I can put up half of the, the sheet on, on the inside, inside wall and, and, and uh, uh, the other half on the other side of the wall, I can run my house. Oh, I got you. Okay. I can still see it. That's what I was wondering. I still need to. I can hand eat out some sheetrock in between my electrical and plumbing. But the you're correct. I can't total and insulation. Right. So the next phase will be put the walls up, run the electrical, run the plumbing, insulate it, and shoot it. Okay, gotcha. And then uh, tackle the floors, so to speak, because that's going to be hopefully the south of the floors. Old, 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 old. But, uh, you, I imagine you got a pretty nice rate on the the loan you got for the place, right? Absolutely. Compared to what you have to pay now. Right. Well, yeah. And I, I to, 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 to pay extra in the rate and still get an awesome deal by at least a point. Uh, I'm paying a point more or a point and a half, maybe, but I think it was a point more in the range. Was, I ended up paying four, I think it was, because mm -hmm. uh, it was like three. Yeah. And uh, because I dated it as a rental house. And it was something that I was thinking about, house, even though I never had a book before, I dated it as a second house, just so that I wouldn't get good at that. When I did that, that covered my butt. This is going to be way better than more. I've never heard of more. Yeah. So, how's real estate in Nashville now? Do you know? I, excuse me. I do not know. I know that I'm astounded by the prices, how much it went up. And I know the rates have gone up. Uh, I just don't know how much. Haven't looked into that. 
you know, here they, they're building like crazy, both industrial, commercial, and residential. They're saying residential slowed down, but I, mean, I don't know how you could tell. I mean, they've built so much. There's so many big subdivisions going in. I don't know. Uh, I heard something about car bottom. Uh, bottom up cars at high prices when the COVID hit because uh, these cars were right. high. But now they've dropped, and now they have these cars that are not worth what they pay for. Them. And so... I wonder how that stems over into the, like you said, here they did the same thing. These, these people came in and started building all these houses and stuff, and London was skyrocketing. I was like, how are they affording this? This and how are they going to, and I guess it's just passes on, because some of the rent I see, $2,900 a month in rent. Fifteen hundred dollars a month in rent. That is like crazy. Well, yeah. For this year. Yeah, you have to look at what. Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine your your rental has, has should be doing well. But the one the the car thing is pretty interesting. We were looking at it earlier this week. You know, car car sales are the worst they've been in ten years for twenty twenty two. By the same token. Um, car prices are way up because you know number one the the, the uh, uh, supply chain um, and then the but on the other hand um, used car prices are way down actually used they're <coughs> offering me ten thousand dollars car it's hard for me to want to let go of it because I have to go buy a new car. <laughs> And, you know, we've got that dilemma. Right, but you went in and it wasn't what they said. Uh-huh. Right, but what the point is that, that there's something wrong. There's something not equitable in this. Because if you've got high new car prices right. and they're not selling, you would think that the used car prices would rise because people would be getting later model new cars. And it's right. not happening. Oh, so really something's good. going on. Yeah. I don't know what. I don't know for a uh, but I have noticed an increase in prices on these parts. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you know, there's, um, oh, how was I going to say this? The, uh, there, there is a, there is an element that to, uh, car pricing in that, you know, they, you, you have been able, some people are able to borrow money for seven years to buy a car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and that can't not be sustainable when you're talking about a depreciating asset. Yes. Uh, right. It just does not make sense. I just keep buying those extended warranties. <laughs> <laughs> what a joke. Well, you know, at one point I could have bought a Jeep the same year as my, I think it was the same year as my, same kind of Jeep. The new one? No. The, same year. the newest, the, the, the one you have now. Yes. yes. Okay. From a used car dealer. Yeah. One point, this is before COVID, I could have paid twenty five thousand dollars for it and got a lifetime warranty. Whoa. Wow. Wow. That couldn't have been full. full. Well, of course, you know, the, the the lifetime warranties are only as good as the the company backing it up. Right. Chevrolet. It was a Chevrolet dealer. Yeah, but they, they, the Chevrolet dealer wasn't backing it up. They were selling it to it was, a third party. Party, yeah. Third party, yes. And you know that, the, the, of course, the Jeep probably was worth maybe 16000 Yeah. So they're getting 10000 or whatever and for a lifetime warranty. And I bet you it was probably limited. <laughs> I didn't dive into it, but I thought that was interesting. That that was the first time I'd ever heard of it, offering a lifetime warranty for a used car, and I'm sure it had to be a limited warranty on the motor and drivetrain. Yes. Warranty on anything other than drivetrain. Well, something. Yeah, said I don't know what's going on, but something's weird. Yeah. Well, even my aftermarket prices have gone up 
uh, um, you know, I've noticed some materials, and I'm sure it's due to, like, the dealership. I'm sure it's because all the stuff that is imported for the new cars has skyrocketed their cars, you know, chips and stuff like that. But, sure. But anyway, enough of that. Mom, are you doing okay over there? Yeah. She's just waiting to go to the urgent care. Which one are you guys going to? I don't know. I don't know which one she wants to go to. They're not all open. On I don't think they're open. Come think about it. Well, we could go by and see which one's yeah. open. Well, How can it be an urgent care place if it's not open? Well, I know the one my doctor had, it's not open on Sunday. Well, this is I know that, but, yeah. and this is Saturday, so yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I walked in an urgent care and it was still an hour before closing and they said we're not taking any more patients. Oh, I remember you saying that. That's not good. And and there was nobody, there was two people in the waiting room. Well, they might have had full rooms, so. Yeah, I ran into that at Applebee's one night. <laughs> Place is practically empty. They got four people at tables and it's just, well, it's like an hour and a half wait. What? Right. right. That, that, that's that's mom and I ran into that in the pandemic, and they said there was no staff. staff. They, they kept giving us the no staff. staff. Yeah. Where are these people getting their money? I went to the doctor Friday, and they escorted me into the room. Immediately after the lady shuts the door after escorting me, there were more opens, and it's my doctor. He said, normally this will be my PA, but he's off, so I'm, I'll be doing this. And he's kind of in a rush position. You come to find out they're short staff today. That right. And that's, he's filling in. And very efficient. The guy's super nice. And well, I answer questions for him. He leaves. The next lady comes in. She was a few seconds later, but she comes right in. And I'm like, I can't believe it's first. And I'm talking to her. She's the extra tech. Yeah, she's the expert. Yeah. She takes my stitches out. Huh. <laughs> They're short staffed in the office. They're short staffed in the, as an x ray tech. They're short staffed, uh, a woman retired, I think, and had the insurance claims. But they were super efficient and fast. And I was like, where are these people, you know, where, where are people getting their money? I mean, yeah, I. I I'm, I'm astounded. I don't know how, how people have dropped out of the workforce. Like, where are they getting the money to do that? You know, uh, where, are the, where are all these immigrants living that we've let in this year? Um, where is the housing for that? I, I'm sure that probably has to do with our rent housing, Rick. I don't know. But the, who's paying for it? I guess the government's paying for it because we're not letting them work. Yeah, if these people aren't working, working, how are they paying that high price, price for the rent? I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's astounding to me. And not to be the grocery store. We go in a grocery store, we buy simple stuff, and it's $150. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just sort of minuscule necessity. You know, that's just nuts. Well, let me tell you what they're doing at the house back now. Uh, like, Dwayne waits on us. He can't bring the bread. They have a server to bring it, the salads and everything. Only he takes the order and all the food. So they have to divide the tips. I don't understand how Outback is coming out of that. Well, you know, I, 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 I put $2 on a, uh, on a check of, of something I pick up for takeout. Yeah. I hate doing that. I do too. And I think about what they're having to deal with. The, yeah, going through COVID and stuff. I know. And that, that's, oh, you know it's, a, it's a guilt. It's a guilt thing. I do it. But, you know, I'm amazed. what amazes me is you don't even see 15% on these things anymore. They start at 20% for tips. Yes. You know, and you, when, you, when you think about this, um, tipping is the one aspect of, of food service that will always keep up with inflation. Right. If you yeah. just focus on the 18 or 20 percent, the right. server is always compensated. Right. But now we're trying to get 25 and 30 percent for the servers. 
Well, just so you know, the villagers, I don't know, all these old people around here don't like tipping. So, and a lot of times the waiters or waitresses will tell us that people as a rule in the villages don't tip well. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. That's why they. it's hard to get down in this little villages area. That's hard to get good help. So. And that's why I tip the takeouts and stuff because I know that they're having a hard time getting employees. So they're probably having to work more hours and stressful because they're trying to rush to take up for less employees. So I take that in consideration, even though I cringe. And you know, that's a good point, Tommy. Last night for the first time, we went to the Japanese restaurant, right? And first, first of all, of all it, well, well, I, I wanted to see if there was a list. list. See how long the wait was. was. And I said, no, no, no way. way. And I said, okay, okay we'll come back because we're we'll waiting. Wait. We, we have 30 more minutes, minutes to wait before my sister in law makes it here. Well, you can come in here, sir. I said, do I? Yeah, really? I said, okay, so we came in and sat. And when we got the bill, which was $49, there was, we were going to tip the guy extra off of the good, because he was really nice to us. We were going to tip him an extra over 20%. And I look down on the thing, 30%. It shows. How many in your party? There's four of us. Well, they shouldn't be tipping on top of that. Yeah, that's interesting. They don't usually add that on unless it's six or more. So that's good. Yeah. You know, it, Wouldn't you tip any extra? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you guys go through the same thing I go, but you know, before COVID, Thea and I could go out and eat for 10 to $12, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. I can't go any for for less than twenty two dollars anymore. And yeah. it was split a meal for fourteen dollars breakfast, and now it's it's um it's like twenty eight dollars. Yeah, twenty eight dollars. Yeah. But you know, the, the, I told you guys about the restaurant we have here, Huey Magoo's. It's it was really I was bragging about it, how good it was, and the service. Right. And, and I and to these guys, they had, they did have a seven percent tip option. And I will do that one on theirs. And in the beginning, I was doing it because they were wonderful. Yeah. But now, they're no different than anybody else as far as the service goes. Food's still good. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I, I have to check my order every time now. They, they leave the sauces out. They leave something out. I don't understand. You know, that's what I have to do. I noticed that, the, uh, to, to me, the carrying... Is not there. We used to have the geniality, is that the right word, for when we're waiting on you? Sure. The eyes and stuff. Well, I mean, this guy last night was super nice. I don't know if I, if I said this, I didn't mean it. It's not, it wasn't mandatory. It was a suggestion. Yeah. The program on their receipt gave you the percentages and how much it would cost. I've noticed you're starting to do that more. Sure. Even on your computer sign outs, the programming says, here's your options if you want to tip this much. And uh, whereas I used to not have that as much, but 30% caught me off guard because I've never seen that one. That, that's awful. That is, yeah, that would catch Well, if you're, the, if you're the white staff, it's wonderful if somebody chooses that. But True. man, what a, uh, what a, it's just amazing to me. Uh, well, you know, yeah. It's, it's we're, we're trying to pick and choose now. We're starting to back off. And if we're doing it, you know, everybody else is going to start doing it. And people are going to start backing off and saying, you know, I can't afford this. Hey, we, uh, we, I picked up, uh, you guys, I'm sure probably have one, but I picked up an air fryer almost a year ago now that we'd never used until recently. Yeah. It was, I paid 20 bucks for it, the smallest one they make. I took some of our, I'd made some poppers and frozen them a few months back and never done anything with them. Yeah. So the first thing I put in this thing was the poppers. Oh, man. <laughs> they were wonderful. Would you and say, uh, Brenda brought mom one last year when she was here, and mom has been using it yeah. almost all the time with her, her uh, frozen stuff. And I went out to, you know, I just went out there. It's just about this big around. I'd That's what ours is, yeah. Four. Just big enough for one serving or two servings. So I get out there, and before we head up to the mountain, Brenda says, hey, I've got some uh, Texas Lone Star 
catfish that I picked up that I didn't eat. You want to split this with me? You know, some, I think it was uh, the catfish and some vegetable. And I said, sure. And she's got the big air fryer, yeah. right? And she put that in there, all four pieces of that catfish. And oh my God, it was like being served right on the spot. With, really? Oh, it was awesome. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm getting an air fryer. Well, let me, let me tell you, one of the great things that we discovered you know how you get your French fries and they're soggy, or, and your French fries are never good leftovers, right? Right. We took, we've been taking the French fries as leftovers and putting them in the air fryer, and yeah. they're as good or better than when I get them out of the restaurant. I know. Well, you know, about Christmas, Christmas. Uh, it, was it was so, so funny. funny. Uh, uh, Cindy said, said Alex wants an air fryer, fry. but she, she wanted, wanted the one with two, 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 two dual, two, so you can cook two things at the same time. time. Right. Yeah. So we got them that. And it was at Coles for 150 bucks. Right. For the dual, dual systems. And uh, and then Cindy said, oh, this is cool. And she put that on her Christmas. <laughs> and so that's what I had to go out and get her. Yeah. And uh, so she fixed me some chicken the other night with a potato, baked potato, each in its separate slots. It was good. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, it's we, we, pretty, we, I think I'm going to go get one because it's. Uh, I'm impressed by it. So if it can give me food like that, and you know, it's it's really tasty, then it's worth getting. Well, it, it adds but, another dimension to leftovers. I can tell you that. You know. Yeah, because we didn't know that. So I'll pass that on to her because we can put leftover Mexican food or whatever else that we have leftovers and put it in there. Yeah. I agree. Yes, Sorry, I haven't been to the bank. I promised you I'd go this week, and I haven't been because I hadn't been out of the house. I hadn't felt like it. It's fine. So I'll, I'll, I'll get, get there. there. Would you tell her? She, she <coughs> you know how it is when you have checks. I know. I know it is. And I'm as far as I can be. I really am. She was bragging about you earlier in the week, Rick, that you FaceTimed her. Yeah. Yes, I <laughs> Uh, yep. <clears throat> I just had to feel like going out. It's all fine, Mom. Don't worry about it. So, talk about Alex. Uh, when uh, when is she scheduled to graduate now? I thought it was May 13th, so that's when uh, we got it. Uh, today, I think Cindy's going to try to find a place to stay down there. <clears throat> Where is it going to be? Charlotte? Wilmington. Whoa. <laughs> oh, well, that'll be nice. Yeah. Well, that's it. She's going to WNC. Okay. Yeah. Is it WCNW, UNCW? UNCW. UNCW. Yeah. yeah. That's where she's getting her bachelor's from. Okay. So May 13th. Then she's going to walk. Now oh, she... so I got it. Alex graduation. I've got it on my phone. Okay, because I get back from... Uh... I think that I have to go to, I don't have to, guys, but I have Cabo until the 6th of May, so I should be able to get there. Yeah, so. It's oh, it's Wilmington, so I need to look for Wilmington. If I lose you, it's because my, I think my phone's going to die. But uh, have you decided on uh, uh, arrangements for us coming down there for? Yes, we got a date. We got a date yesterday. Um, just push this down, and it's going to happen. February 17th. Actually. Okay. So, okay. It's uh, <laughs> birthday, but it's, it's February seventeenth at two p.m. in the afternoon at Bushnell uh, Veterans Cemetery. We'll do it in. All right. So, oh, well, that's interesting. Friday, the Friday. That's my anniversary weekend. Oh man, well you should take care of your anniversary weekend. Oh no. Or you can bring your wife and <laughs> her enjoy the villages afterwards. Tommy, Tommy you and I, well, we can't leave the dogs. I mean, it's just, it's getting bad. Just, I mean, I'm really struggling. I'm having to wake Bailey up. I mean, really struggling to get her up. Yeah, well, it's, it's okay. Hooping while they sleep, peeing. I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm just, this, this is going to be, it's going to be hard. Sorry. You know, Sorry. Do it, but that's what it is. It's February 17th at 2 p.m. Uh -huh. Right. 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 Right.
Well, uh, uh, Tommy, I guess you're not so. Sure. Uh, oh, well, well. If Colin, you got battery. Uh, huh? Colin, you got more battery. <laughs> right. I need four day to drive because I'm probably, I'm thinking driving. I'm, I never really thought about flying, especially since there's an hour drive back from the. Well, you certainly, I mean, you're talking about driving here? That's what I was there. Sure. I mean, we can leave from here. Yeah. That'd be good. So, come down. That's the arrangement. So, um, so we'll return. She'll be like clothes. She'll be put in a niche. I'm, you know, they said I could put her in a grave site, but Mom and I have been out there a couple of times in the club, and he's in a niche. And the, um, the grave site, you have to walk and find them. And that's not very easy. There's no easy walkways out to the grave site. So I said, I'd like to put him in a niche because there's benches close by. Her, you know, her name will be put on it, and just so you know, I can be interred with her when I pass. So they can take me there and add me to the same niche and put my name on it. Good deal. Okay. What's well, on my calendar? Okay. Good. All right. So I'll get my act together and I'll get with you, Tommy. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. Well, I think we can. Yeah. Uh huh. That's uh, that's in peak season. So the house is the house is occupied till till April, so that just means you you guys will have to stay between mom and me. That works for me. Sure. I have a bit. So. Really do. When are you happy? Well, the interment, February seventeenth. Yes, I did, but you don't remember. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just tell me you're going to have business. There's a February 17th. Sounds a good one. Five weeks. Right. Uh, that's how long you stay? No, it's how long before we're there. <laughs> today's, is, today's the seventh. It's five weeks. I know. Yeah, this is coming. I got a lot of things to do between you. Me too. All right, guys. All right. Love you. Enjoyed it. I love you. Rick, we'll talk later. Love you, Mom. Bye, Mom. She said bye. <laughs> love you. Bye. I love you, too. That's it.